Hello everyone, Andrew here from glazertutoring.com and today I would like to teach you how to use the factor theorem in order to find the zeros of the following polynomial function. In order to do this we have to know what the factor theorem says, so let's take a look. Bam! So it basically says that the polynomial x minus k, which I kind of have in the following form roughly, is a factor of some function f of x, which is represented as this in the problem, Okay, if and only if f of k, or when the function is evaluated at the value of k, is equal to zero. Now, this is kind of invoking a little bit of the remainder theorem. All right, so what this is really saying in like English, because I don't know about you, but my mind like goes numb whenever I read like math definitions. What it's basically saying is, it's basically saying that if you take a look at this linear function, it can't be squared, it has to be in the following form like x plus a constant. Now you can have a coefficient here, that's fine. But if you now take this linear polynomial and you divide it then into this function, if when you divide it, the remainder of that division is zero, then you know that this is a factor of this. That's what it's saying. So to test whether this is a factor, I'm going to divide it into this function and see what the remainder looks like. Now you can use the remainder theorem. You don't even need to really use any synthetic division then. But I'm going to use synthetic division because I have a feeling the factor they gave us will work out. And I don't want to have to kind of, it's just going to get too long. So I'm going to do synthetic division and I'm going to be able to see whether the remainder is zero. Cross our fingers. Let's hope it works out. Bam. All right. So this is basically what I'm looking to do. I'm looking to see if I can divide this function into this function. All right. And if this results in some polynomial function, which I should expect if I, I should expect it to be like a quadratic afterwards, because I'm dividing basically X into like X cubed and X squared, right? So the highest power of X should be squared. Um, if I do that, and the remainder down here of my synthetic division is a big old zero, then I know that this is a factor, all right? That's what we're going to do. So we just have to do synthetic division. We can use synthetic division here because this is not squared, all right? It's a linear function. So to figure out the number of columns you need in your synthetic division table, what you need to do is locate the highest power of x in your numerator function, add one to it for a total of four, and that'll tell you the number of columns, all right? So inside the first goes the coefficient of your x cubed, coefficient of x squared, coefficient of x, and then your constant. So the coefficient of the x cubed is going to be a two, boom. Coefficient of the x squared is a five, bada bing. Coefficient of the x term is a negative 12, boppity boopy. And then the coefficient of the constant term is a negative 30. Boppity bop, sure. So next thing I need to do is figure out the number that goes in here. So that's where the divisor comes in. So you're going to take the divisor, and this is the nice part about this method, that you set it equal to zero, and you solve it for x. So you subtract five from both sides. You're left with two x is equal to negative five, and then divide both sides by two. And this is now going to be the value, negative five over two. That's the value that you're going to plug in here, negative five over two. Now this method's nice because it doesn't, you know, if you had some complicated coefficient here, anything other than one, you can use this method all day long. All right, so now that I have everything set up, I'm going to follow a very simple series of steps. Take the first value, drop it all the way down. That's why the box is red there. Don't write anything in. Then you're going to take 2, multiply by negative 5 over 2. Now, if you need to do this out, you can, right? Negative 5 over 2 times then 2. You can put that then over 1 if you like. But the 2s will cancel, right? Boom, boom. And then you're left with just negative 5. Okay, so now that value of negative 5 goes into the next adjacent cell. And you then add this up for a total of zero. Then you're going to take and repeat the process now. You're going to take the bottom number, multiply it by that outside number. Thank goodness it's zero because that makes the math easy. Then you're going to multiply this. All right. So that, uh, excuse me, add this. I said multiply, I'm going to add. That comes out to be a negative 12. Then you're going to take this and multiply it by the negative 5 over 2. So then it, do it again on the side if you need. Negative 5 over 2 times then negative 12. Remember that's really like over 1. You can reduce this, make your life a little easier. The two goes into the 12 six times, right? The negative times the negative will be a positive. What's five times six then, ladies and gentlemen? It's gonna be a positive 30, right? Cool. So plug in 30, add this on up and look, zero, zero. 
That means the remainder is zero, because remember, that's what's inside of this cell. That's what the remainder is. So now, since I divided this linear function into this polynomial function, and I got a remainder of zero, what that means then is I know then for a fact, the factor theorem says that this is now a factor. Okay, that's a factor. Now, since this is a factor, to find the zeros from factors, what you do is you take them and you set them equal to zero and then solve for x. We already did that. I already did that over here. So we actually already know the zero of the function, meaning that the function will cross the x-axis at negative 5 over 2, or roughly negative 2.5. Well, not roughly. That's exactly it. All right. So you might just say, well, did I have to really go through all this? If, if I just set this equal to zero and go for it? Well, no, because if this worked out to be a 17 or anything other than zero, it's not, this is not, this is not a factor and this is definitely not going to be a zero. Okay. So um, anyway, so let's write X is equal to negative five over two. That's one of the factors. Now, since I have a cubic function, I should expect that I have did I say factor? I don't know. I meant zero. If I said this is one of the factors, I meant to say this is one of the zeros. Since I have a cubic function, uh, I should anticipate then I should have two more x values. Now, it might not cross the x-axis in two more places if the factors or the zeros are imaginary. All right, so that we just have to keep in mind. But let me just erase some of this work. So we clear some of this out a little bit. All right. So Basically now what this means at the bottom here, and this is why the synthetic division is important, you have to remember that this is your constant term now of your quotient, this is the coefficient of the x term, and this is the coefficient of the x squared. All right. So now the benefit of this is that you know what is now the quotient again. So it's 2x squared plus 0x, but who cares? 0 times anything is nothing. And then, multiple, and then subtract 12. Cool? So now what we're going to do is I'm just going to now manipulate this a little bit just to kind of show you a different uh, perspective. This is really over one, so you can simply cross multiply this, right? You can take the 2x plus five and cross multiply it, right? So let's do that, okay? Let's do that, one second. Here we go. There it goes, cross multiply. Let's erase all this then because we really don't need the fractions anymore. So what I realize is that I basically have one term in factored form, and then I need to somehow factor this, possibly. Now, since the problem isn't, you don't have to factor everything, okay? The problem is find the zeros. So once I know I have this now polynomial, I realize it's a quadratic, right? It's x squared. So what I'm going to look to do is I need to think, how do I find the zeros or the x values of quadratics? Oh, your old friend, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over then 2a, okay? What this formula does is it solves for the zeros. It gives you the x values, okay? Would that make the function go to zero? So in order to use this, you have to identify your a, b's, and c's, right? Remember, the a term is always the coefficient of the x squared. So that means that a will be equal to 2. Remember, the b term is always the coefficient of x, but you don't have an x, so guess what? It just goes to zero. And then C is the constant, so C is going to be a negative 12. Now what you can do, you can go ham, throw this, I, I never really understood that saying. Just makes me hungry sometimes, ham. You know? Could go for a nice ham sandwich. Anyway, um, what you're going to do now is you can take, if you're not allowed to use the calculator, just take these values, plug it into the formula, and then just do some basic algebra. Right? I mean, that's simple at this point. Or you can use your calculator if you're allowed to use it, and you can use this program. By the way, if you don't have the program, Check out the description below. I'm going to leave you a link. I have like a three or four minute video. Watch how fast this is. Ready? You're going to execute the program. Plug in your A, 2, your B of 0, and then your C of negative 12. Hit enter, and boom, it's done. There's the zeros, okay? So the other zero is going to be 2.44 positive. I'm going to round heavily, so 2.45. If you need the exact values, you can use your calculator again to do that, or you can just plug it into the formula over there, a negative 2.45. So it does have all real roots, okay? Now, to see this visually, just graph the original function you had over here. So 2x cubed, 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 12x and then minus 30. And hit graph. Look, right? If you notice here, the graph looks like it touches 
how many places? Well, if you look, you're like, wait a minute, it only crosses two times. What the hell is he talking about? Well, if we zoom in, we might be zooming in a little too much here. Yeah, we really can't tell. So I'd have to, you got to trust me on this one. Well, you know what? Let's set the window, okay? So if you notice, you see over here, you see this is negative 2.5 and this is negative 2.45. You know, if your window isn't close enough on that area, you're not going to see the, you're not going to see the difference. But let me try to fix the window for us, okay? So let's go to negative 2 point, I don't know, six maybe. And then let's go to negative 2.4. And X scale is one that's fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then let's do Y min and Y max. So I'm going to go negative 0.1 and then positive 0.1. Hopefully this works. We'll see. Let's graph it. Ah, there you go. You see, see across two places. So I zoomed in a little bit. This is going to be the negative 2.5, and that's going to be the negative um, uh, 2.45, roughly. Now, if you wanted to find those values by using the calculator, just go to second calc, type in zero, meaning hit two for the zero, okay? Now, what you got to, if I want to find this intersection point, just go to left bound. Actually, this one's probably a little harder to do. So let's go, let's, let's find this intersection point on the right, okay? So click. Now, it says left bound, meaning... You got to be to the left of the intersection point, somewhere to the left. So just hit enter. You know, close, but not too close. Then you got to go right bound. So somewhere way far enough to the right. That's good. Then you got to just guess. You don't have to get this damn thing perfect, all right? You just got to guess. That's close enough. So hit enter. <gasps> Look, negative 2.449, blah, 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 which I rounded to negative 2.45. So, see? I, I don't know. I, I was debating what word I should use there. So it just came out as... <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this helps, guys. Please, if you can, like and subscribe. It helps us out tremendously. And even maybe mention us to some of your classmates. That's really the best thing um, to really kind of help us out. We'd love to help more people, all right? And uh, by the way, check out our channel because we don't only have math. We have physics and chemistry as well. We have thousands of solved problems out there to help you through your class. We want to help. And we focus on specific problems because that's what you're going to see on your tests. Take care.